Well, hi there, boys and girls. Today we're going to talk about circles and limousons. So let's just get after this. I'm going to take a look at the graph of r equals 2 cosine theta, and we're going to graph this and see what pretty picture this makes. So I'm going to let theta go from 0 degrees all the way around to 360. I'm going to see what happens. So I'm going to plug in 0 degrees into this equation. If theta is 0, the cosine of 0 is just 1, and 1 times 2 is 2. So I'm at the ordered pair 0 degrees, a radius of 2. Now that's right there, because this is 0 degrees with the radius of the second circle. Now let's plug in 30 degrees and look along that radial line. The cosine of 30 degrees is the square root of 3 over 2, times 2 is the square root of 3. Now the square root of 3 is about 1.7, so I'm going to have to approximate this. I have to get on the 30 degree radial line, and I'm going to go up to about 1.7. That's going to be somewhere in there. Now let's do 45 degrees. The cosine of 45 is 1 over the square root of 2, times 2 gets you to about 1.4, so it's a little less than 1.5. And then at 60 degrees, the cosine of 60 is 1 half. 1 half times 2 is just 1. So at 60 degrees, I'm at the first circle. Then I'm going to plug in 90. The cosine of 90 is 0. So at 90 degrees, I'm at, well, I'm right here. And then I'm going to keep going with this. At 120 degrees, this is where things get weird. At 120 degrees, the cosine of 120 is negative one half. And negative one half times two is negative one. So I want to come to a negative radius. A negative radius means we go out the other direction. So it'll be out here. So instead of being at this 120 degree radial line going this way, since I got a negative answer, I went back out through the pole to the other circle. So I went back through here. And then at 135 degrees, which is right here, I get an, also a negative answer. And it's about negative 1.4, so it's about right there. And then at 150 degrees, if I plug in the cosine, I get a negative answer again. So I have to go back through the pole, and it's about negative 1.7. And then if I plug in 180 degrees, the cosine of 180, which is this direction, is negative 1 times 2 is negative 2 so I have to go back here and I'm right back where I started and if I were to plug in 210 cosine is also negative here and so these dots would be lining right back up on themselves because of the negative radius and we get I know this is not perfect but we honestly get a circle this is a circle that has a radius of 1 probably should have just let my dots speak for themselves especially because of that right there but whatever. Oh, you know what? I know how to draw a circle. I'll do that here. We get a circle of radius 1. Looks about like that. That's a, that's a better representation of what I wanted you to see. So we should know that this is a circle and it's out to the right. It's out to the right because it's cosine of radius 1. Circle with a radius of 1 and it's pointing to the right. I'll just do to the right. I also want you to notice that this graph is symmetric over the x-axis. That is because cosine is an even function, so you're going to have symmetry. Let's take a look at a different example. R equals 2 plus 2 cosine theta. And I'm going to actually fill in some different values of theta and figure out what my r is. So we're going to do 0, and we'll do 30, and we'll do 60. 90, 120, 150, and 180. I'm not going to keep going to 360. Number one, because I'm out of room, but number two, because I'm going to take advantage of that symmetry we just talked about. Now, if we plug in zero for theta, which is this angle out here, this is zero degrees, the cosine of zero is one, times two is two, plus two is four. And then if you plug in 30 degrees, I'm just going to tell you it works out to be about 3.7. If you plug in 60 degrees, you get 3. If you plug in 90 degrees, you get 2. 120 degrees, you get 1. 150 degrees, it's about 0 0.3. And 180 degrees, it's at 0. So let's graph those. 0, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 30 degrees, 3.7. 1, 2, 3, and a little bit more. 
60 degrees, I'm at 3, 1, 2, 3. 90, I'm at 2, 1, 2. 120 degrees, right here, I'm at 1. It's not negative, so I'm not going to go back this way. It's about right here. At 150 degrees, I'm about 0 0.3. And at 180, I'm right here at 0. Now, because this is a cosine-based polar graph, this is going to be symmetric about the x-axis. My next dots are going to be symmetric, so I can just say that that one is symmetric with that. And then this one, oh wait, I missed a dot there. Let me back that up. Do -do -do -do. The one at 210 will be symmetric at the, with the one at 150. Yeah, there we go. And then symmetric there, symmetric there, and then symmetric here. One, two, that's the third circle, right? Yes. And then symmetric here about there. And there is our graph. And please don't make fun, but I'm going to try and connect this. So it comes around like that. It comes back to what's called the pole. And then it goes back out. Oh, I fell apart there a little bit. There we go. And we make a heart or a cardioid. This is a heart graph. Ah, little dot there. Cardioid. We make a heart. And that was because, well, I'm not going to tell you why, because you're supposed to figure that out in class. We're going to call this a special case of a limosome. All right, let's take a look at another example where we're going to take advantage of some technology to help us out with the graph. And we're going to do r equals 1 minus 2 sine theta. And I'm going to show you this on the calculator, and we're going to see if we can graph this. So on the calculator, I've got my graph of y equals 1 minus 2 sine theta is already graphed there. And on top of that, I've hit F1, and I've gone down to Format. And I told it to give me the coordinates in polar, not rectangular, but polar coordinates. So let's go to the graph. I'm going to hit F3 and I'm going to trace this. When theta is 0, my radius is 1. So it's right there. And then it goes up a little bit. And I've got, got this in increments of 15 degrees. At 15 degrees, it's about 0.45. So 15, well, I don't have 15 on here. That's, this goes 30, 60, 90. So let's get over here to 30. At 30, but you saw it swept around, and it's back to the pole. So it's right here. So it does this little thing right here. It goes up just a little bit, and then comes back there. Then what happens when you get to 45 degrees? When you plug in 45 degrees, let's go to the table and see what happens. If you plug in 45 degrees you get a negative value. 45 degrees negative value means we have to come back here so it's actually starting to graph it in quadrant 3. So let's get back to the graph. And it creates what's called an inner loop. So out here to 45 it's a negative radius. I realize the 45 degree angle is up here but because we got a negative radius we have to come back to the other quadrant. And then 60 degrees also I've got a negative value and then out to 90 degrees I get negative 1 and I keep getting these negative values all the way until I get back to I went too far I get back to 150 degrees and now at 165 and 180 it's graphing it in the proper place and it just sweeps out like this and it goes all the way around until it gets back to 360 and it makes what's called and this is not a cardioid, but it's still a limosome. And so I wanted you to see this. Now, tomorrow in class, you're going to be playing around with this. And I want, I want you to pay attention to several things with this. So I'm going to come back to my graph. I'm going to call this 1A, and I'm going to call this 2B. And I want you to take a look at the picture. How far out to the right did we go? We're, we went out to 1. Let me trace all the way back around here. We went to the right one, and that's one of our intersections, or one of our roots, I guess you might want to call it. And then 
how far down did we go? This is down one. We went out one to the left. And another thing is, what's the furthest we got away from the pole? The furthest we got away from the pole is three units down. Three units down. You're hopefully tomorrow in class, you're going to be playing around with these numbers and you're going to figure out how to tell how far to the right and to the left you go, how big your inner loop is, and how far you get away from the pole. And so that's your job tomorrow to learn that. So I'm going to go ahead and give you, however, your general equations for your circles and limosons. Circles are either a sine theta or a cosine theta. Your radius will be a. And whether or not it's pointing to the right or to the left or up or down will depend on the sine or the cosine. The one we did pointed to the right. And your equations of limosons have, they've added something to your b cosine theta or your b sine theta. You have like 2 plus 2 sine theta or something like that. And this tells you whether or not it has an inner loop. But I, hopefully I want you to learn that tomorrow in class when you're tracing it and play around, playing around with it. So... Anyway, I guess that's it for today, and I will see you guys tomorrow.